Hello, good evening and welcome to So Much Game. Um, this Sunday, instead of further deposing uh, crazy dictators in Worlds Without Neighbors, we'll be playing part two of the Battle of Kursk that we yep. so far haven't gotten round to because when we were going to play the second part I was ill. Um, but there you go. Thank you for joining us. And as usual, do all the like and subscribe things and following and so forth. Right. Uh, here with me this evening is, as expected, Nye. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Anything to tell here. the people, the uh, very, many, many millions of people watching Nye? Uh, I'm very happy to be here. I, I like I like <laughs> this. I'm, I'm glad we're back doing some some Battle of Kursk. We'll probably talk about some World War Two shit because that's that's just no. our bread and butter at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you think about the Panther? Oh, don't get me started with that. Well, now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why our uh, turns take so long. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's very true indeed. Um, uh, yeah, I think to start off with, I'll just run through the rules quickly again because it's been a while for both of us and for anyone watching at home or on Twitch. Um, yeah, we'll run through the rules quickly this time and give you an idea of what's going on. Um, so I'm going to use the sequence of play and just go through that. So before I get to that, immediately diverting from my original plan, um, I think the most important general concept to remember is other than like it's a 10 sided dice system and roll low, um, is two units can stack in a hex unless they're being transported but we don't have any of that at the moment it's all tank units armored fighting vehicles and um a lot of the actions describe an eligible unit uh which is one that is neither disrupt disrupted nor marked with any other status marker such as fired or moved which is mm. very important to remember because basically, once you're disrupted, um, you can't really do a lot in a turn. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, same goes for after you've fired or when you've moved. So determine uh, initiative is just basically a dice roll. Uh, roll 1d10 and the highest number wins. And yeah, and that's pretty much it. Uh, if there's a tie, it's the person who didn't get initiative last time, but we can't remember who that is, so it'll be nigh <laughs> if there is a did, tie. Did we... Who, who was doing well in that one? Was it me or you? It was sort of even Stevens at the moment. I was it pretty was. sure you were going to win in the end, but like you've got a couple of disrupted uh, tigers. I've got a couple of yeah. disrupted or... Uh, reduced units and also a wreck. So, yeah. So we don't get any lost. more units, do we? Either. No, no. Yeah, no, that's the, your the, lot the for the entire. Yeah, yeah the different um, the entire scenario. scenarios just changes the. Yeah, it's sort of basically. Uh, no, no. Well, the different scenarios are basically all across the Battle of Kursk, so it'll be different units oh, each right, time okay. participating. I follow, I follow. And it's like a specific engagement that you're going into yeah. per scenario. Okay. Um, other than that, let's see, wait, what's the next one? Draw action cards. We each get one card per turn according to the uh, scenario mission specific rules, the scenario rules themselves. Then there's the rally phase, uh, in which you basically have to roll under your morale for every unit that's disrupted. 
which for the Germans is five and for the Soviets is three. So like you have a 50-50% chance of rallying and <laughs> I have a 30% chance. <laughs> <laughs> So once once the Soviet units disrupted, there is a fair chance it won't do anything for the rest of the game. Oh, wow! Well, uh, yeah. Op- optimism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then next up's the fire phase, um, which is alternating fire per unit, starting yep. with the initiative player. Uh, important things to remember there are things like line of sight and the like. Trying to think if there's anything. uh, In the fire phase, well, um, any unit that's marked fired, which happens after they fire, is also not eligible for close combat in the close combat phase or to move. So that's mm-hmm. like important things to remember. But obviously, in the movement phase, tanks can move half their movement rate and fire, which is yeah, uh, move and fire. Uh, mm-hmm. Or you can also save them for the movement phase and use opportunity fire, which basically means once a unit, an enemy unit, moves within line of sight of you, you could use your fire there in the movement mm-hmm. phase and other than that obviously you can move in the movement phase uh, terrain is the most important factor there and also another thing to take into account is unlike the fire fra- phase it's not alternating it's one side the initiative side moves and then the other side moves well the initiative player can decide who moves first which is also fairly important uh, then after that is the close assault phase, which is every non-destructed uh, unit that hasn't fired that is adjacent to an enemy unit can initiate a close assault. And close assaults are once again alternating, starting with the initiative player. Mm-hmm. Then housekeeping is removing all the fired and moved markers and things like that. Aid Mm -hmm. and focus phase is where you get to put those aid tokens and the focus marker tokens on the map or use them, flip them, move them, that sort of thing. They're very important. The aid token provides an extra opportunity, well, an extra dice in the rally phase for the unit it's on. Uh, and the focus marker can even be used to try and improve your chances of gaining the initiative or to re-roll an attack. Uh, hmm. And then you yep. advance turn marker. So I think, yeah, if you're watching this, I think that's pretty much everything you need to know. Let's have a look. I'm forgetting anything. Uh, yeah, line of sight is important, but we'll get to that. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. that's pretty much everything. Okay, yeah. Yep. Okay. I remember then. most of that. <laughs> <laughs> right, then I'm going to throw us over to the map now. This is the bit everyone's been waiting for. Here we are. Um, so, for the people watching, as you can see, uh, I was the Soviets, so these units here. Oh, I can't see the map. Uh, oh, you see the map? No, I don't. Uh... On your vessel, what, can't you, won't you load it in? I think I am. And then uh... game info tonight. How was it not sent? It should yeah, have it done. Said it's waiting loading. for game info. Mm, that's annoying. Oh, no. uh, Load let me game, see. Perhaps do I need to do that? Maybe. Yeah, maybe have a look if you can. Uh... Oh wait, no, I didn't save. Remember, I I haven't been saving wait. any of the games because you were saying. Yeah, uh, yeah, because because yeah, I, I saved it and it should have sent it to you. 
It does say synchronization complete. It just says I'm waiting for the game info. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Mm. I can share my screen to, to show you what I've, I've got. Um, yeah. Mm, um... There we go. In the right be able to module. See Let's see. Uh, yeah. Should be okay. Yeah. Wait, just, let me have uh, a look. Yep. Uh, tech problems. Always fun. Apologies. I, I thought it was because you you weren't showing the, the, the map to the stream. So I mm -hmm. thought it's like, oh, okay, cool. I'll see you in a minute. Um, yeah, no, yeah. you should should be so seeing it now. Pizza stack. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I do not know either. Synchronize. Just gonna stop that. Yeah, you can turn your screen sharing off if you want. Uh... Okay. Do you want me to provide distraction or is it? Feel free. Um, yeah. No. I'm Sorry, I was just trying to work out. No, it's okay. I, as I said, it's my fault. I should have, I should have said that something wasn't working yeah. beforehand. That's okay. Yeah, I can see on the stream. Yeah, weird. I don't know why my my vassal. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you're sending me the game info. It's Am I? saying sending game. In oh, it's sent. It's sending game info to Gen Two K. I don't know oh, yeah, we, well, we should be synchronizing. Um, oh, okay. Wait, let me try again. <laughs> Are you sending the white screen to, to Lewis? He'll need that information. <laughs> yeah, uh, that did appear to be what was happening. Uh, I do not know. Uh, I, it, am I on the wrong version, perhaps? Um, did I'm you do the... Yeah, yeah, that same yeah, one. Yeah, I'm on the right version. Oh. Oh, okay, yeah. no That's idea. the one I sent you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I know. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Um, I mean, you, you can see it on, on Twitch. I can, but I can't. <laughs> really oh, yeah, but wants. that's going to be cursed. That's going to be like... Uh, move it, move it a little bit. A little like, bit a little more. Bit more. A little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh no, I can't even now because my my Twitch is is freezing up. Like on my mm. end, because my internet's bad. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to see if end. I can. How can we probably best do this? I suppose what I could do is I can send you the save game and you can try loading it as well and see if that syncs it. Okay, yeah, um, um, that checks out. To be honest, I've never reloaded a game on Facel that I was playing with someone, so I can't tell you if it will work. <laughs> It we might just end up rest. We throw away the facade and we just end up talking about World War Two. Yeah. <laughs> we just go, ah. Where? We, do, we, we pull off the curse that every TTRP, well, not like tabletop meetup falls into, where you don't actually play the game you've brought. You just end up having yeah. a natter. <laughs> uh, okay, I shall download this. It's allowed oh. as well, as long as everyone of has course. one. Yeah, of course. Uh, okay, so I shall... If there happen to be any uh, vassal experts 
in on Twitch watching right now, feel free to let us know what we're doing wrong. Uh, oh boy, okay. Um, right, I'll see if I can. I'll just have to. I'll just find the file. I was going to try and put it somewhere useful, but I'll just go searching. So it won't be in any of that stuff. It'll be in library. Oh no, it'll be in downloads because I just downloaded it. Let me try it the other way around. Oh. It is. Downloads will be there. Yep. I will sync with you. You right, try loading the try game and see it. if it. Oh yeah. my god. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, that has worked. Um, I don't know what you did or if I did something. Uh, new session beginning, start new log file. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Click yes. Should note uh, this has opened three versions of the game. <laughs> <laughs> which so, one then? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it's opened two versions i don't know which one you are uh enter comments um, describe oh, yeah. God. if you find me somewhere feel free to uh right oh i think i'm in the right one here <laughs> oh god right fuck it we'll close this one isn't streaming fun everyone Right, is this is this Just me? have a Hello? casual, relaxed is game. Is there a chat that I, can can I can type into or something? I don't know. Is there a way I can communicate in the game to show I'm here? I don't know. I'll try moving. Uh, yeah, if you type in the log bit. There we go. Just, I moved uh, yeah, one of the typers yeah. a little bit off. Well, I can okay, see right that. Thing. I just can't see the map. <laughs> oh, you can't see the map now? No. Oh, this is, no. Um, what? Interesting. Oh my god. I don't know what's going wrong here. Wait, oh, oh, I think the map is just somehow hidden at the back. Uh, I think that's what's gone wrong. Mm. Oh god, yeah, I've put myself in a really shitty position, I've just realised. <laughs> Damn it! You know you weren't meant to realize. <laughs> well, I'm just reminding myself. It's like, goddamn, I have to like try and dig these T thirty fours, seventy sixes out of the out of the fucking woods. Uh, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, yes, okay. an AI, an IL two versus the GU eighty seven. Yeah. Neither of us have air support at the moment, though, so it doesn't really no, matter. No. Right. Um, can you try moving something again? Because I'm going to move the map, same thing. Think... Oh. Damn. Yes. Ah, oh, there we go. We're in. Perfect. We're in. We're, uh, yeah, we're synced. Half an hour so, late, but it's okay. For everyone at home, if you're ever using Vassal... <laughs> At any point again, just take into account you both need access to the save file. Well, we'll know that for future. I mean, it's a simple enough fix. It seems, yeah. Like now we know that is one of those very much now we know things. Okay, we're There's ready no to go. Um, so to start off with, basically we both roll initiative. Yep. Uh, how do I do? No, roll 1d10, yeah, and I'll roll one. Uh, I rolled one, you rolled three. I got initiative. Mm -hmm. um, and then we move on to the draw action cards phase. So yep. I'm going to draw one from the deck and add it to... Oh. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, well, oh, you can draw guard. first. No. Nope. Oh, sorry, I thought we drew it at the same time. Never mind, uh, had I shuffled the deck? No, nope, never mind. Uh, uh, uh. Alright, you can just drag it to your deck, and then it'll give you a little small readout of what's on it, so you don't have to flip it first. Let me see what I got. Okay, Should, am I meant to draw? Sorry, am I meant to wait for you? Yeah, no, draw? no, you can draw. That's fine. Okay. Uh, deck, draw a card. There we go. Oh, have I taken the whole deck? No. I, no, I hope not. It's just, just being weird. <laughs> okay, it's a bit weird. 
it's got the deck. I'm gonna I'm gonna try putting it back and then No, it's very strange. Do you know what it's doing? It's got it's got the Battle of Kursk logo and yeah, then the card yeah, yeah, yeah. is is a yeah, smaller no. image. Yeah. Is that right? Um, oh. Right click on it and click on mask and then it'll flip it. Right, okay, because I was about to say that's that's really inconvenient. I have to like get out my Yeah, my I know that was what I was thinking, like I can't read that. <laughs> okay, yeah, these are Oh, I like these references. The references I'll, are pretty funny. Yeah. I'll be honest though, one thing I'm not overly fond of with Vassal is their user interface. It's a bit uh, but it is ideal for playing lots of different types of board games. Which that is true. Otherwise, Very you true. wouldn't be able to do. Mm -hmm. So we can. So you're going first, yeah? Uh, yeah. Technically, it's okay. my go first. So next. There are no technicalities in war. <laughs> Technically, I won, but yeah. um, I should probably actually have a look at the chart because I don't know if we actually moved the game turn up. No, it was the end of turn four, so now it's the start of turn five. And I'll flip it because I have initiative. There you go. If you click on charts and tables, you can see it. And also all of the charts and tables. Yep, Unfortunately, yep, yep. the people at home can't. Did we do? Because did it's we do a pop the first scenario. Take the high ground. No, no, because um, no, I've done that do. before. It's it's basically it's four units of Soviet infantry sitting on a hill, and then uh, I think it might not even be four. It might be two, and four units of uh, well eight. Oh yeah, that's it. And eight um, German mechanized infantry in half tracks that have to try and take it. And basically, it's just purely made to learn how to move. And right, stuff. Okay. it's not really. It's not it's the not most fun, fun okay, scenario. Fair yeah, fair enough. And I mean, you're getting the hang of it quite quickly, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I, I just was checking. I couldn't remember. Uh, I felt like this was the first one we did. I was just checking. Uh, yeah, it is. Next up is the rally phase. Okay. Which is going to be important. So I'm going to... Well, I'll roll my rallies first. And then you roll yours. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start off with the unit I've selected on the map which is the T-34 in Q6. Yeah, Q6. Yeah, Q6. So I'll roll a D10 for that. They did not rally, unsurprisingly. Um, and then, yeah, the same for the ones in 07. Starting off with the first one at the top. They did rally, my god. That was unexpected. Uh, <laughs> oh no, it was only one unit apparently that was. Uh, rallied, right, and then the one underneath it. I can re-roll that with my aid marker that's on there. So I move, well, delete the aid marker because it moves out the thingy and then I can roll a d10 again. Still not rallied. So one of the two did rally though. Okay, that's good, yeah. Take what you can get, you know? Yeah. Yeah. A Soviet lesson <laughs> through and through. <laughs> Lessons from the Soviet Union. Um, yep, yeah, I think that's all my disrupted units, so then it's Yorga. Okay, so I have three units, yeah, three tigers. 
No, four uh, tigers. You have five tigers. You've got two up the top in O uh, one, one down in no, R three, three, and then two at the back in M five. I'll do. It's the handy one that they're on. numbered. Numbered yes, hexes I'll, are handy. I'll do it's the one that's. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say I'll do the one that's not zone just for simplicity. Yeah, so sure. roll one. So that's a five. I missed numbered hexes in RPGs. They tend to rarely do that. Uh, five is a rally for you. Okay, so that that guy there is there a way I can mark it or? Uh, yeah, if you click on the disrupted marker, what well, right click? Click on it, select it, right click, and then you should have a selection you can rally. put, press rallied, and then, yeah. And then if you expand those, you might be able to see the unit underneath, but I don't know if the unit underneath was disrupted. Uh, no, it was not. But there you go, then it's the one. all's well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's all I need to do, isn't it? Just one yep. uh, rally Just that one. In Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Right, go ahead. Um, and then we go over to the fire phase. Uh, which is me to start as we alternate. Okay. Uh, do you get to go first because of the initiative? or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then we alternate until everyone's fired i don't know like not sure i actually want to fire any of them um you are on the defensive yeah i know but now i have a cunning plan <laughs> oh no that's always a don't worry we have german steel because that's yeah. all you need just confidence that's how you win a war you don't need plans. You don't need what those nerds in logistics are saying, like resources. <laughs> Who Just needs attack, that? Attack, attack. Yeah, exactly. Uh, That's how we lost the first war. <laughs> <laughs> logistics? Who needs to worry about that? I'm sure we'll have won by then. Exactly, oh. yeah. Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh no, no, no. Um, like it, once, once you beat a country, they just give up and don't put up any resistance. They give you everything <laughs> you want. Yeah. That'll work. Exactly. For those in, in, the, in the cheap seats, I am, of course, being exceedingly sarcastic. However, there were certain parts of the German, mili uh, the German high command who really did just think this. They were like, oh, yeah, no, we'll just go in. Everyone will be cool with it. They'll, they'll, they'll like the new regime change. We don't need to plan. We'll just we'll just go. <laughs> we'll go, and then we'll see. We'll, we'll win. Duh. And then, you know, two years down the line, and they were like, oh, okay, we'll still win. Look at this. Just trying to think. So technically, I can shoot you up to three hexes out because all of my units have a green range band. Um... <laughs> They have a firepower of eight. Well, an anti-tank firepower of eight. You obviously have an armor of eight on all of your tigers. Yeah. So that would put me in the zero category. I'd have to roll really well because I'm probably going to get some uh, shifts. Mm -hmm. It'd just be a straight zero. Go on then. I'll give it a go with this one here. The top unit. The top unit that just rallied in 07. Okay. Um, oh, wait. Just thinking. I might not actually be able to see you. Because of the trees. Because of the, the cultivated. The ah, the tiger for the trees. Cultivated isn't blocking. Apparently. Oh. Just well, convenient. the wheat the wheat grows quite the, high. In yeah. The, uh, the wheat has unfortunately already been harvested by the look of it, and so I can see. You. <laughs> There's a tank there in that field. 
well, the wheat was harvested. Well, it was probably burnt. Let's be realistic. It's the Soviet. They were like, no, no wheat for you, bastards. <laughs> probably. Seems yeah. fair. Uh, yeah. Which no, is a, another okay. thing they legitimately thought. They'll just leave everything intact. They wouldn't, you know, destroy all of it while we come in. Oh, wait. That's they did. not like exactly what they what did they to did Napoleon. Last time. <laughs> yeah. And the time before that, yeah. Um, oh. Right. Go on then, we'll give it a go. So I'm okay, rolling cool. on the zero firepower uh, category. And I really have to roll low, but I can use yeah an eight's not gonna cut it that would be uh, it'd be one potential hit but i'm gonna use my little focus marker uh to re-roll that a three is two potential hits so basically you have to take two morale saves which is yeah no a 50 50 percent chance for you so of saving them Oh, a 2d10. 2d10, yeah. Yeah, okay. you can. Or you can roll them one at a time. Why was I rolling eight dice? <laughs> I'll, I'll let you roll dice. eight saves if you um, want. <laughs> why, why am I adding to each die? It should be zero. I'm not adding anything. Uh, a four and a five. Um, yeah. I... Both of those save. Okay. <laughs> So that was that, and yep. my unit gets marked with fired. And then it's your turn to fire a unit if you want. Okay, uh, I would like my tiger up here uh, in R3. Can it fire upon your unit in D2? Or is that obscured by the forest? Uh, the one in R3, well you can usually you can draw a line and then, like, if it passes through blocking terrain or next to blocking terrain, you'll be able to see it. If you take it from the middle, um, how do you draw lines? Sort of hold it. Wait, uh, how do you draw? Fred. If you click Fred at the top. Then, oh, Fred. Yeah, then you can sort of draw a line. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think. Mm. A little bit off. I'd need to maybe move to R4 to do it. Yeah. Well, you could do that in your turn if you wanted to. What, move, move and then fire? Yeah, move and fire. But I don't know, was it uh, Was it partially blocked or...? Why? Well, I'm not at a perfect diagonal angle. There's like oh, one... Yeah. See, yeah, it clips that one corner. Damn. That's... I don't know if that, that feels like, like, uh, going, oh, it clipped that one corner, you can't shoot at me, feels a bit dickish on my part. Let me have a look at the line of sight rolls. Regale people with tales of the Battle of Kursk, Knai, whilst I look up for Well, us. as we said <laughs> last time, just, just for a reminder, for, for the people who didn't see the first one, or it's been a very long time since we talked about this, even if bad guy Nai. Wehrmacht Nye, whatever you want to refer to me playing the German army, is not going to win because Kursk was not the deciding factor. There were many points in the war that you could point to and theoretically put a deciding factor to. I don't like doing that personally because I think history is, is it's too easy to, to see history as this static thing that happened and is immutable when in reality it was a very fluid thing that was within the control of many different people and it's just hindsight that makes it see it like that but Kursk is one of the few ones where I go no it doesn't matter if they win or fail it just it literally just moves the clock a little bit yeah. forward or a little bit back so it's, it's all that happens it's one of the rare times I would go yeah no the outcome doesn't actually matter tremendously, even if they just ignore it. It's like, okay, a little bit, the, save a bit more time. The level of casualties that they'd have sustained to win would also have made yeah. victory irrelevant. Well, but even, even if they didn't do anything, 
Like, because I've mm. read that comment, like, I should have just left it alone because the Soviets were going to pull out, right? You're sitting there like, okay, so the Soviets pull out. Maybe they last a couple extra months on the Eastern Front. It doesn't, like, it, it, the thing that always bugs me with it is, is because it's such a memorable battle. Like, obviously, the classic one being, which is why I'm excited for close combat, because we have tank ramming, which did occur, <laughs> although it's very spotty. Some people say it did, yeah. some people didn't. Um, but yeah, it's like, I think people just don't recognize it's like, it was, it, it, if you want a, a lesson from the Battle of Kursk, it was more, huh, yeah, your your strategy of always attacking, not really considering the overall plan, and just kind of this whole iron will bullshit doesn't yeah. work, and Kursk is the final nail in the coffin of no, it doesn't work and now you're in a defensive posture for the remainder of the war you know yeah it's uh yeah it does kind of um yeah no i looked up the rules and apparently as long as it's crossing a blocking terrain hex it counts as blocking so like that one little lip is yeah if it goes down exactly along the side of it so wait from where you are if say c3 was blocking terrain and my unit was behind that in d3 or e3 or something like uh not e3 so it would have to be e2 whatever and it went okay. along that line down the center of c3 so then that I... unit would still be visible but can I move and fire in this turn? Or does uh, that not in this turn, that happens in the movement okay. turn. Uh, if it's okay, then I would like to change my shooter and yeah, move sure. to the ones in Step Novo. Step Novo. Yeah. Um, and I will have... Blast oh, the crap out of my... One of them's already fired, it seems. Oh, that was probably just left over from last turn. You can delete okay, that. Can... And... Yeah. Oh, oh no, how do I have some things? There we go. Um, okay, I'll have one of them. F- oh no, I don't think I can because they're all in the forest, so I can't fire into them, can I? You can fire into the one, like the one in 07, you can see because they're in the forests. But they're like in the front bit of the forest. Yeah. yeah okay. That uh, yeah, terrain fire, counts fire as blocking terrain for things behind it. So right, okay. basically, the train in front of it is visible, so you can yeah. see into a blocking train, but you can't out, see yeah. past it. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, yes, now I will fire into the to the woods. Uh, at Seems some. fair. So that is a D ten. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so just to run through the whole thing, um, the yeah. you're firing with a firepower of twelve. <laughs> <laughs> against my massive armor of four um yep. so yeah that already puts you on the eight table um <laughs> and then wait let's see if you're in short range one two three what band is it red so you're in short range which is a shift to the right so you're in the 10 line tens table okay um okay. and you're firing with two units uh yes i am yes yeah and then you get a two column shift right as well so that puts you up to the 16 band oh okay. so yeah basically anything better than a nine is probably gonna be bad for me <laughs> Okay, uh, so I have to roll two dice, yeah, because I'm firing with two. Uh, no, just the one. Just the one die. second unit gives you that plus two shift, right? Ah, right. I got a three. So uh, a two to three in the 16 band is seven potential hits. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what, I, I like to imagine like a tank when a tanker crew pops their heads out I just shoot into the forest and it's like shrapnel oh god <laughs> Ooh, that's actually... Ivan why did you stick your head out of the coppola uh, I mean coppola is a German that thing. is actually 
something to remember the terrain effect itself for oh, was a, that a thing? forest yeah is a one column shift left so that would have put you on the 12 which is still really really good uh, and it would have been rather than seven potential hits it would have been six. only six yeah <laughs> i think as well um boom because because this is very impressive and obviously far well if you want to roll i'm just gonna I'm just gonna monologue as I always do. Yeah. I think there are a lot of people that are, think the tiger is cool. Now I'll say this: as 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 a nerd who likes World War II history, I do think the tiger looks cool. However, as we've said before, the tiger is like a ridiculously complicated and expensive thing to make. So yeah, the T-34s are getting curb stomped, but yeah. there are ten more of them. Actually, no, there's far more just than ten wait. more of them. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. Hi, Bubble Ridge, by the way. Thanks for joining us. And Hi. so Nye has just uh, practically obliterated. No, I think you've completely obliterated those two units, if I'm counting. So I've got three failed saves, which means okay. that first unit becomes disrupted. Yep. Uh, and oh, they didn't quite obliterate them, and they both get flipped. So I flip one for the next hit. Uh, flip. Oh, that wreck in the, the and the then flip the other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just remembered that. God damn! It's the fucking what is it? The battle of there was one in the early stages of Barbarossa where it's just one KV one. KV just v one. Yeah, I was cars. thinking of that. Yeah. Like ah, oh, we're the stuck. Of oh well. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's it. Right. And, and we just have just to like, keep firing. We can't get yeah. out. <laughs> but I also like the fact that that's a great, like, I, I, somebody made a great point that it's a really good establishment of the kind of mentality of both sides where the Soviets are like, oh, we'll just fucking sit here and we'll yeah. take punishment. And even if we die, we know there's more behind us. Whereas the Germans are like, no, we're going to have to beat every, like, it's pride at this point. And like, but commander, we can just go round it. It's a KV one. It's slow as no. shit. We just drive out <laughs> and it's fire rate. No. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah. Right. Uh. So then it would be my turn to fire again. But as I've already yep. mentioned, I'm going to forego firing. Setting up a deep one. Well, this wouldn't be deep battle, would it? It's uh. It'd be a very close Lovely. battle at the moment, yeah. yeah. Very, very <laughs> close and painful battle. So, uh, oh, also, yeah, you have to mark your unit fired. Uh, fired, there we go. Yep. Uh, yes, Battle of Rissania was a large yeah. tank battle, yeah. KV ones look pretty cool, but they do look very, also derpy as well. <laughs> <laughs> like they weren't very gun. like <laughs> nineteen forty one style tanks though. Like this is a tank we've well nineteen well, thirties in that yeah. case, yeah. But big you know, gun. yeah. <laughs> it's not was, even big gun. Like, it's like big turret, small gun. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was reading but about very heavily armed. I was reading about today. <laughs> Um, I'm yeah. going to remind, remember this guy's name. Hey, we, we can continue forward. I'm, I'm just trying to remember mm -hmm. the guy's name. Do you want uh, to do any more firing? Because otherwise, uh, that's pretty much it for the shooting. Well, for the firing un phase. Unless I can take a pot shot at C8. I, um, but I don't think I will. Do, 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 I think that's quite a push. C8. From the one in R3, I take it. Yes, yes. You R3 probably can, because you have a pretty long-range gun. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, you could hit it at long range. It would be a column shift right. Um, two column shifts left, sorry. Okay. Right is good, left is bad. Left, in yeah. this case. I, as a left-handed person, I, I completely understand that notion. Yeah. That, wow, that's great. Yeah. Finally, I'm playing with my peers. Yes, left-handedness. <laughs> no, well, I want. 
We'll have to do a study into how many left-handed people play or run RPGs on <laughs> Twitch uh, probably, probably not a lot, considering <laughs> left-handedness is not very common. Um, Interestingly, yeah. yeah, so about 25% of the population, like pretty much uh, probably close to 50 or 60% of the world's best fences. No, oh, I didn't know that. Mm. So, um, oh, oh, Bubble Reg, you've you've unleashed a crack in a Pandora's box. Do you have any interesting historical? Go on, yeah, of course. Cars? Like, I'm, if I'm people have interesting Bubble stuff in chat, I so, we want to yeah. hear it. So, uh, we'll we'll do the rules and stuff because I do I really don't want it to sound like last time where I spent like twenty minutes just going over it. So, the Battle of Cars <laughs> was. If, if you want to put it into context, the Battle of Kursk was a reaction to Operation Saturn, which was what the Soviets followed up with once the Battle of Stalingrad was over. And the Battle of Stalingrad is a big influence on Kursk because of how much of a complete catastrophe it was. And I want to say this, Stalingrad is also in the category of... Like, if Stalingrad didn't happen... Why? <laughs> yeah. If, if Stalingrad didn't happen, yes, their chances are a lot better, but it, you would have to make them not them for them to not make the mistake that they made. Or at I the mean, very least... Yeah. Like, yeah, pretty much putting a big sign up that says Stalingrad and yeah, you know, exactly. it became a point of pride it never, it never factored and, in that's, what's, that's yeah. what's so ridiculous it was not mm. it, it was a part of the strategic planning but it was it was like the, hitler kind of became very well, obsessed with it yeah. as well he was like i must have it and then stalin was like he must not have it and it's, everyone else is like <laughs> oh god what the fuck yeah because that's the thing like okay i i get like they Try to rationalize it as it's an important crossing over the Volga, but you know, there were other places they could have created. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And as well, beachheads. It's, all right. We're going, we're talking about Stalingrad. Sorry. Um, so, Kursk. So, what the plan was, the Soviets had been pushing the German lines back steadily, and there had been a bulge, well, a salient is the more uh, technical term that had occurred at Kursk. So, the plan bulges was, outwards and the salient yeah, is in, so it, it depends on who you right are. There. Yeah, yeah. It does. <laughs> so, the, well, because there is a battle. There's obviously the Battle of the Bulge, which gets yeah. very confusing. Which was a, which was basically the the Germans trying to think that they could pull a Kursk and and failed very badly. They were like, "Ha ha! If the Soviets can do it, we can." No. So anyway, I apologize for confusing you. So. At Kursk, the plan was that they would go round the sides of the bulge where all the Soviet units were, and then encircle them, and then get rid of them. And that was going to renew the offensive initiative. That did not happen, because the Soviets were tipped off by Allied intelligence, British, um, Bletchley Park, all that kind of stuff, uh, code breaking, da -da -da -da, the Enigma machine, all that kind of things. So the Soviets were actually going to retreat anyway, because having a salient is generally not a great idea on a on a front that big, because it is just well, asking. It, it's it's yeah, it's one of those things that is potentially useful because it creates an exploitable area, but it it's does. also the area where you're most vulnerable. Exactly. So you have to weigh the pros and cons. But it was Georgi Zhukov that was like, no. We're going to build up the defences so it's really difficult for them. And they pretty much did kind of what they were intending to do because the what the Wehrmacht, the German military, wanted to do was they wanted to bleed the Soviets dry. And the Soviets wanted to do that to them. So it was kind of one of these attritional things. Um, but what this battle is most famous for, I would say, is the suppose it well not suppose it because again historians go back yeah. and forth on this is tank ramming that the tank battles were so fierce that they were smacking into each other once they ran out of ammunition should note uh, i don't think kursk is the largest tank battle in the second world war is it uh is it's it? well mm, it was near kursk the battle of pod uh 
Oh, it's one of those right, Russian okay. names that I can never remember. It's, it's, like, it's technically part of the Battle of Kursk, the larger scale battle. Yeah. But it was a single battle. Uh, the Battle of Por... Well, the other, the other thing I know about it is Por... that people think it's like hundreds of German tanks, hundreds of Soviet tanks charging at each other. It's like, no, no, what was happening was lots of small confrontations spread about. It wasn't like a giant cavalry charge. But yes, an interesting tidbit, Bubble Reg. Um, so when Stalingrad fell and all the Germans got captured or killed, um, they had to abandon the ones that managed to escape. A lot of Romanians and Hungarians too. Never forget those guys. Um, a lot of their heavy artillery had been taken, a lot of their anti-tank stuff, because it was too heavy to evacuate in the fashion that they did. So, they had a cunning plan. They would stick very large um, um, armaments onto their Stukas, their uh, grammed attack air aircraft, which had been kind of... Yep, big, big, well, 3.7. And they were going to shoot the tanks and the ground from the air. They were going to have air artillery, which sounds cool. And actually, interesting enough, I was watching a thing, um, and the air battle of Kursk was actually pretty close to a tie, largely due to the fact of the the damaging of, I think, I think the Soviet air just got decimated. But then obviously the, mm. the, the, the Luftwaffe was also was already itself dry. yeah exactly was already yeah. running low so so yeah they it's a tie mostly because the person that the soviets got beaten up by was already fairly beaten up anyway but yes they they had used the sky artillery they had a lot of stukas largely because they'd become not obsolete but they'd like they tried to for example the stukas are the ones that go eh, like if you've seen a war movie that like whining the siren, noise yeah the siren yeah that's the air brake going off um they had used them in the battle of britain but they were not useful at all because they're big slow things that fly right at a target so the the british crews just pointed that an aircraft gun and they were used on the eastern front but the problem is the eastern front was very big so a stuka squadron would have to be like sent many tens of miles just to get to one point but at Kursk, the thought process was, oh, well, we're not going very far. We'll just throw a lot of them at them. And in this specific scenario, it did kind of work. But also, as I said, they were, as we've said, they, they were also fairly beaten up from fighting on three fronts. Mm. Britain, <laughs> North Africa, and then subsequently Italy, and then the Eastern Front. I hope that's not too confusing. Um, we, I will probably no. talk more nonsense <laughs> as we go forward. Apologies, anyway, I just held up the whole game. So, yeah. largest battle, uh, well, tank battle, is the Battle of... Um, oh, God damn it, I can't remember it yet. Pro Prokhorkova. <laughs> oh, Prokhorkova. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. And that's, that's like, because obviously the Battle of Kursk is said to be the largest because it had like six thousand tanks or whatever but that's over the course of the entire well the entire bulge slash salient and the entire yeah. battle whereas the actual single largest day of battles between tanks was mm -hmm. that yes. or apparently some people say the battle of brody so there you go that was the one i i was thinking of some people do call that yeah. one the biggest mm -hmm. In World War Two, the biggest one, yeah. like in history, is like from the Iraq War, isn't it? Like Desert Storm or something. I can't remember it? this. Um, I don't, I don't know. know. I feel I like World War Two is probably like, because it? like I after I'm that. Not, no. Oh God, I've, up, I'm, I've upset some Verabu. <laughs> like, how dare you? <laughs> to come back to I your point though about air artillery, that was basically also comes back later, not during the Second World War, but later on in American planning for yep. fighting the Soviets, because that's basically what air land battle is. Mm -hmm. And it's still kind of a thing used today, because yeah. they also use them to kill tanks, tank killing. There was literally a uh, Flieger Jaeger or something, literally like they took Stuka crews that were meant to hunt tanks on the battlefield. Um, and yeah, that that is still something we see in modern warfare with I think well I don't know how modern it is now but isn't the warthog like a big 
fuck off jet. Uh, a ten warthog yeah, with dead. the That's literally big designed cannon. to find a tank and then it goes. Okay, cannon. hello. <laughs> yeah, that makes that <laughs> noise that everyone is. Then things disappear. Exactly. But you know that. So I'm not going to get into that debate because uh, people have opinions on that and it becomes a very big thing. But uh, Do I you, do I roll the dice? You should. Uh, so I'll just run through it again as well. Like, so you're firing at long range. I rolled a nine. <laughs> well, <laughs> you were firing at ro- long range. Um, so it's 12 versus four again. Uh, so that's on the eight track, but your, t- 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 do you have any modifiers, bonuses? I don't think so. Because I'm just shooting long range. Because it's just one tank shooting at long range. Yeah. Um, you get a two column shift to the left then instead. So that goes down from eight to four. Because mm-hmm. it's not every number. <laughs> yeah. Like, seemingly all the even ones and there's a few gaps uh and on a four a nine is actually still one potential hit so i get to roll one save and cry (laughs) yeah so the person that i was um learning about today was the uh i i've never met a man that could be described as a meme before but i have um his name was Grigory Kulik. Have you heard of him? He, he was the name Soviet, sounds familiar, but yeah, yeah, Soviet. Um, he was the Soviet general who didn't like oh, yeah. tanks. Yeah, he yeah. he thought tanks were not the future. He's most famous for C H or something, isn't it, Kulik? Yeah, I think I've mostly seen K. Yeah. What? Yeah. I think I've mostly seen it written down, and that's why I, I know the name. Yeah, he didn't like anti-tank guns, didn't like tanks, thought Katusha rockets were lame. Uh, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he wasn't even the only one. There was a big cavalry mm. guy who, in the Soviet high command, he was like, yes, cavalry is the way forward. He actually said, like, he did love mark my word. He did have cavalry, <laughs> and the cavalry did have use. The Italians used cavalry as well on the well, Eastern Front. Yeah, the thing with the Eastern Front is obviously moving by a bunch of horses is viable on a large step exactly. kind of terrain. Yeah. Where, because that's the thing, like, people count it in, wow, these massive gains that Operation Barbarossa made and so forth. But it is a lot of large, open, empty, flat space yep. with nothing in between. So, yep. you know you're fighting in the areas that are important and not the big middle bit where there's nothing. Mm. Yep. And what was there? They destroyed. Cause yeah, yeah. They were like, well, we don't need this. We'll set it on fire. And then they won't get this tiny farmhouse. (laughs) Oh, yeah. No, the Soviets (laughs) did not fuck around. It was like, no, everything must go. If Mm. we're leaving, we're not giving you anything in return. Which, so, considering who they were fighting, makes sense. Yeah, you can mark that unit as fired as well. It did yeah. actually manage to disrupt one of the T 34s Oh my goodness, that's insane! <laughs> okay, that's me done. Fancy, like firing, so you can just mm-hmm. like if you want to fire some more, you can just go. Uh, and, like, I'm go. not going to. Uh, so then we move on to movement. Uh, the okay. important thing here is basically every eligible unit is allowed to move. Um, mm-hmm. and I can move first because I have initiative. Yep. And I'm going to see if I can get there. Uh, kind of. You just look up the terrain chart, which is also available digitally, digitally in Vessel, but you know, it's been difficult. Uh, so that'd be two movements. One, two, yeah. One, two. So tanks can One, two, have fired and moved, three, can't they? Four. Um. To declare if you want to, yeah, fire. if you want to do that, you're better off doing that in the right. movement phase. 
I, do you uh, want to rescind your no, having no, fired? I don't. I'm quite happy with what I pulled off. Are you sure? Because it kind of falls into part of my trap. Well, trap. It's not really much of a trap, don't worry. Well, I'll be moving, but I'll probably be moving the, the two behind. At the back, that are in yeah. The, the door roll. So I will be moving mm -hmm. and firing, but yeah, don't worry, I'll fall into the trap. Depends, you're a bit further out than I'd hoped. <laughs> I can see the trap, it's not, it's, not, it's not too difficult. You've got a bunch of tanks on the left side and a bunch of tanks on the other, and we have to yeah. go right through that. Hell's Garden, Devil's Garden, although that was Rommel's thing in North Africa. I'm just full of World War Two references. Yay. That's what we're here for. Uh, exactly. I don't know, I don't think I'm actually going to be able to manage it, but ah. Uh... God, I feel really sorry for anyone who watches this and doesn't know anything about World War Two, and is just seeing us like repost each other with oh of course Rommel and they're just like I have no idea who this person is they're referencing well Bobble Reg that is that's like yeah it's basically one of those things isn't it also we're always looking back on things so you know um, oh, well, there will it, be plenty of people who thought <laughs> was, oh yeah no yeah people thought one Chile of those people was moron. was Stalin so yeah, no. Well, yeah, uh, for context, the only reason he was in power because he was, like a lot of the Soviet high command, he was friends with Stalin. Um, yeah. I mean, some of them, like uh, Zhukov, um, got through, like he rose through the ranks kind of thing. Um, but and, yeah, Kulik was a friend yeah. of Stalin until he stopped being in 1950 because he was executed for being yeah. a traitor, which sounds like a polite way of saying, we don't like you. So go away, which, oof, yeah. Well, which is pretty much Soviet yeah, Union it's... policy for... Yeah. Like, well, yeah. Stalin, Stalin uh, policy, definitely. Yeah. Um, he was also considered a bully, if that helps. So he was just a general bad boss in general. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I don't uh, know I if I want to do it, though. See, I, I have I, a I plan in mind, that. but I just can't... Yeah get there <laughs> i'm being awfully cautious for the wehrmacht for a panzer corps mm. well it would have been easier if you weren't <laughs> so it's probably for the best no i know yeah i know uh, <laughs> there's me humming and hollering when i should just make a decision shouldn't i oh yeah you better because i'll start filling time again we'll be here all day all night The problem is also like you have a zone of control around your units. Yep. That adds one extra to the movement cost to get in there. Mm -hmm. Which is fine for these two top units. Uh, oh, I could it's do some risky question, crazy stuff. What what's what tank do you like the most out of World War Two? Me. Lewis. Yeah, what's your one? It's um, not a question from Chad, it's a question from Nye. I really, well, like, everyone will think I'm crazy, but it's, it's purely an aesthetic thing. I really like the A-13 cruiser tanks. Really? Oh, okay, yeah. that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, interesting. Like, uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to have been in one. <laughs> No, of course not. But That'd be terrible. Not, not even just like all of those cruiser tanks. I mean, they're not yeah. a great idea for a tank. But I, I just I, I like, don't have a lot of love for British tanks. I don't know why. Nah. They just really don't interest me. Um, American tanks are kind of interesting. I think the Sherman mm -hmm. is quite quite a fascinating piece. Uh, you know what? As silly as this sounds, I kind of really love like tankettes and and light mm. tanks just because there's such a weird like thing in uh in history um i'm gonna do it by the i do oh tell tanks apart it's not too difficult if you 
watched as much history yeah documentaries you kind of get up. used to it and at a given point you're like oh that's that and then that's that yeah. and then it 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 gets bad when you can tell variants of the same tank about. oh that yeah you're like oh that's <laughs> obviously you're like, oh, oh, and you're like oh yeah. no oh no i've gone oh, no. deep yeah I like I, I quite I think things like the Panzer One and the like I, I think they're interesting because you find them in the war and you're like you are not supposed to be here you are very outdated <laughs> for this and they're just yeah, like eh. even you know right up to things like the Battle of Moscow that's yeah. what they turned up yeah. with because they may have little, started yeah. with Panzer Threes and Panzer Fours running all the way down. Thingy, but they quite quickly ran out of isn't tanks. It like, isn't it? Isn't it like forty to fifty percent of the tanks they started with the Barbarossa were obsolete, like Panzer ones and twos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, but for context, even for beyond that, right? it was just also like purely losses, you know, and yeah, not well. not important ones. Like, oh, it got dinged, but this bit's broken and it needs fixing. Oh, we don't actually have any spare parts to fix it with. You'll have to use something else. Uh, mechanical failures and all sorts. And then obviously the actual casualties. And so by the time they got there, yeah. I, I've got a good book of information on it. And yeah, they were fighting with Panzer twos, <laughs> Or some no, armoured yeah. units were on foot. Just, just, just reading the chat. Um, no, I wouldn't say you're you're dumb, Bubble Reg, because it's not. It it's so what what Bubble Reg says. I remember most of my knowledge of tanks was from World War Two documentaries, and I had in my head that they were big slow things. Then when right. I saw the war in Iraq, and these tanks were just powering across the desert, and then he said, mm -hmm. "I felt so dumb. I hadn't thought about how the technology would have come on in six years." I think yeah. the big. The big thing that people perhaps wouldn't know offhand from World War Two is that tanks into the Cold War and today are what are known as main battle tanks. So yeah. they're tanks that have multifunctionality, whereas going into World War Two and actually in World War Two, that's not how tanks were designed. So the tanks that will probably be in your mind most will be mediums and large tanks, and they were not the same thing for function um no. so i'm you know yeah it, it's like the scenario we're playing now exactly i mean so t-34 versus are tigers medium, right? yeah tigers are large tanks and they, large, they have heavy slow tanks yeah. yeah oh yeah tigers tigers were this slow, is pretty much their pro because mm -hmm. if you're trying to defend with them you can't maneuver faster that like okay you get into that situation again where they're like no we have to destroy the tiger because it's there but they really didn't need to you could go around it and it will exactly. break down eventually <laughs> but i wouldn't say that's a dumb yeah. thing to think because we only know this mm. stuff because we're nerd it's, yeah. it's definitely not mm -hmm. and to be honest like tanks now are a lot faster but i wouldn't call them you know main battle tanks they're not going to be running down cross terrain at yeah. yeah at like 70 miles an hour so and they're not going to sustain 70 kilometers an hour for oh, yeah. a very long time if, if at least because they'll run them, low on their own fuel, yeah. yeah but yes but uh, what was it yeah say? so are you what, what are you planning uh, well, I've moved those two units. Um, okay. I'm thinking about moving some more. Okay. I can actually, can't I? I'm going to move this unit here okay. and then use opportunity, um, not opportunity fire, but the other one. Move and fire to give you a couple of shots at the unit in, units in Stepanov. Mm -hmm. um, probably not going to do much, but give it a go. Just 
just because I can yes. at this point. My 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 thing with tanks is I quite like the the experimental or obsolete ones that were used. Mm. And I, I, for example, I like KV one because it is very much a oh god, you really or the classic multi headed tanks. Which are oh, just yeah. Ooh, like, so what ugly. T. <laughs> the T. Oh yeah. Seventeen or something. It's like one of oh, with the two turrets on it as well, and big long kind of First World War style one. Two turrets on top. So like, oh. oh, what's it called? Great oh. fun. Um. See. Tell me when you've. Bubble uh, Ridge. I mean, or... even we don't. No, or T35. can remember them. Thirty-five. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's 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 horrible. It looks like it. It looks oh, but yes, well, it's um, beautiful in its stupid it, design. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, more, let me fire. More, so more firepower, yeah. right? No, less <laughs> firepower. More confused tank crew that's sitting there going. Oh, ah, jeez. That's sort of like the thing where they had those rear machine guns on things like the KV-1 or KV-2. Yep. And, yeah, like... Mm, there's there's okay. the curse attacks that I love, where it's like, if the... Yeah, a lot of turrets, yeah. Uh, mm. If the... It's the if the if the Ferdinand had a had an MG thirty four, it would be able to defend itself better. And you're like the Ferdinand struggled going up a a you know a two degree it's, slope. It's the same thing. Like, well, we ignored the Ferdinand and drove around it, and eventually it just broke down because yeah, exactly. uh, and it wasn't really a problem for us. Like, if it's, you it's, have to it's... go through the exact area where the Ferdinand is. That's unfortunate. But me, if you can avoid it's a it, little, it's a little saying. Saying having a gun on a vehicle like a Ferdinand, like an anti-tank or a, mm. an, a, a self-propelled um, anti, a self-propelled artillery or whatever. Yeah. I, I'm pretty yeah. sure it was an anti-tank gun, um, a self-propelled anti-tank gun. Um, it needs a it needs an anti-personnel weapon. To me, at least, at least from what I've seen, it's a little bit like going, well, if you step in dog shit, you should always bring a second pair of shoes. It's like, yeah, having a gun to defend yourself from infantry is great, but you shouldn't be near hordes of infantry in the well, first place. You, you also, this Ferdinand shouldn't be there all on its own without infantry no, support. No, not at all. Exactly. It's what combined For... arms doctrine's all about. Yeah, yeah. As the Russians like, later learned in Georgia, uh, oh fairly God, recently. Yeah. But yeah. Um, anyway, to get back <laughs> this Sorry. before I, 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 I alienate even more of our viewers. Uh, yeah. Well, I only uh, do this while while you're doing like the calculations yeah. and stuff because I think that's covering for time, but it ends up distracting you. <laughs> yeah, well, because then I stop. I stop going. This is the calculation. And I go. Ooh, interesting yeah. fact. Ooh, I have a, I have <laughs> Um, so anti-tank of eight versus an armor yep. of eight, zero table. Uh, I think I am, yep, still in normal range. So that's no modifiers anywhere. And you're in cultivated terrain, aren't you? I don't think that actually yes, um, gives you a shift. No. Yeah. So, yeah, three. it's going to be on the zero track. And just roll one dice. A five is one potential hit, which is better okay. than none potential hits. Yes, it is significantly better than none. So I shall roll my... I got a four. Uh, also, Bubble Rage, thank you for joining us. I hope you're not feeling yes, too tired because it's yeah, very nice of you to join us after the week you've been having. Exactly. Thank you. It is most appreciated. Mm. Nice well, you saved call. that, Don. <laughs> I did. I did. Mm. So, uh, are you I think I'm firing? gonna. Mm, I'm gonna leave the rest sort of behind a little bit, uh, where they are, oh, roughly. Yeah. So I will do no more moving and firing. I'm because I don't want to throw everything at you in one go and have it get destroyed. 
Um, yeah. That was it. Chartoucy. That's another just beautiful mm, abomination. Yeah. Takes mm. 20 people to crew it and it's... <laughs> That's what you call a super heavy tank, and they are yeah. very redundant. Even then, they were redundant. But, Nye, how can you say this? I mean, if they had built the mouse, like, yeah, surely duh. they would have... If they had built, if they had built the not... Land Cruiser Rat, yeah. <laughs> with literal <laughs> naval guns on it, it would have been amazing. Again, I hope the sarcasm is, is seeping through. It would through. have been amazing to see, and a large yeah. waste of industrial resources. And um, the Soviets were going, yay, a bombing yeah. practice! <laughs> even in, even yeah. our pilots can't miss it. <laughs> like, yeah. we can well, just... it, it would become, every day they'd see it, become target practice. It'd be mm. like, okay, we're training some of the new recruits. Yeah. So, uh, I have... Oh, is it my turn for movement? Because you've moved yes. your yes, guys. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so, so basically, to... any eligible unit, which is a unit that hasn't got any markers on it. Um, okay, sorry. Um, yeah. I, I, it says and move, also, so it's Bubble Reg, feel free that. to ask whatever oddball question you have. Oh, yeah, please. Please, go. Those are the ones we like. Yeah, don't worry um, about it. <laughs> It's more fun that way, I think. Cause we get I mean, I'm charging that. in now, otherwise I'd have probably waited another turn because I thought, oh yeah, it's getting to about 11. I should probably undertake some action. Well, and also, so I'm just going to move it to R2 and also move the bait. Uh, and I, I want to, is it possible to engage in close combat? Because this thing hasn't shot. Or just um, close combat? Oh. Yeah, that's the next turn. You can engage okay. in close well, combat, but the move. advantage here is I can engage in close combat first. Ah, oh, no. Okay, well, that's <laughs> fine. We're getting to the Kursk moment. Tank ramming. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I looked at it and I realized I actually stood a decent chance of, like, doing something Oh, that's combat. a really cool question. Yeah, If you could is. turn any World War II tank into a time machine, which would you? It will take your supplies and protect you from whatever you encounter. Well, first off, I'd be an allied tank for several reasons, because uh, th that's the most safest place you're going to be. <laughs> True. Uh, you'd not want to be an Axis tank. Uh, if you want to know who you don't want to go in, don't go in an Italian tank, because they were very, very under armored and gunned and just got chewed up. Um, oh, and Japanese tanks as well. Yeah, not they well, were all light dumb. tanks. Tank yeah, all light heads, tanks. So. They got chewed up by whatever they met. Um, um, also, uh, maybe don't go for early US tanks, like Lees and, and things like that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, yeah, they're and, not the best. And although it's fun, um, don't go for the Tetriarch. No, no. <laughs> Any uh, tank I... that's intended to be provided as airborne support, yep. probably don't yep. get in it. Or Same with, like, what in. is it, the Sheridan? The American yeah, thingy yeah. in the Vietnam and, War. And, that the they... A, and the A-20 flying tank was another one, or A-10 flying tank, mm. which was this. Like, it's not just a concept. It's, it's basically like we give the partisans behind enemy lines a, a tank, a tank. <laughs> to use for a little bit and and the thing that people don't know about light tanks is light tanks were very scary if you were a partisan because all you have is a rifle you stole and maybe some grenades and now suddenly mm. a small armored vehicle with machine guns that you can't actually hurt realistically if you're if you're unlucky is now in your face that's why they used they tried to upgun the panzer ones to, to yeah, make them more useful. To make them garrison like, tanks, yeah. Exactly. But yes, um, I would probably take... Side note on that, that kind of flips if you're in a street. <laughs> yes, it does, very much so. Because uh, it's a lot easier to as, sneak up on them. As weird as it is, right, I I think I would probably go... I, I know I just shat on... But actually, no, I probably would go for a, like a Sherman or something. Uh, because... Well, I... Mm, one of the things you got in Sample Reg, there's this, there's this 
rather annoying myth that got created that the Shermans were very bad. But the reason why Shermans had very high attrition rates is because they were attacking defended positions. And defenders always have better kill ratios than attackers because they don't have to worry about, you know, attacking somewhere. They just got to <laughs> sit in the place and not let the attackers get in. Well, um, like if you're, I, yeah, if you're defending uh, yeah, a I, position, you have time to set up your lines of exactly. fire. Whereas if you're attacking, you just have to go with. Yeah, I probably would, probably would go for a Sherman. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, it would be more pleasant as well because, like, like probably a Sherman in like nineteen forty four, occupied France. Like, uh, yeah, a, a um, oh, what are those turbocharged ones called? Oh, oh, a BT tank. They're cute. I like them. Yeah. Are you familiar with BTs, where they can yeah. take the track yeah, 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 yeah. off the yeah. wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No. Uh, um. In my case, I don't know. It depends. Like, what? What's the point of it? Am I specifically going back to World War Two, or can I just use it for I think, wherever? I think. Uh, yeah. I think if it was World War Two. Yeah, that's why I said don't go Axis because you will just be yeah. killed. They did not have good, um, ratios like for survival. Um. Yeah, it's kind of tough. I mean, in an ideal sense, I would never want to go to World War II because it just sounded like a horrible time for everybody mm. involved. Um, but yeah, it's... Yeah, I would say... I mean, realistically, you would want to go somewhere that has a decent not-you-dying ratio. So, yeah, I probably yeah. would say... I guess... This is really weird. I guess a French tank, like mm -hmm. Free France. Interesting. Yeah, because oh. yeah, they did. They actually were all right, like survival wise, and they got Shermans and a lot of land lease stuff. So yeah, yeah. Mm. fuck it. Maybe, maybe even France <laughs> before they capitulated. Because again, not great odds, but they actually did put up a pretty decent fight against the German armor. Yeah, so, yeah. it was also yeah. Their armor was also wildly misused. So, yeah, because the best the best way to divide your tanks up is individually. Because as they say, divided we are stronger. Yeah, <laughs> individually with infantry units, whilst everyone else seems to be building these things called tank divisions or armored yeah. divisions. Ah, exactly. No. So I we weirdly, want them piecemeal, like in the First it, World War. <laughs> exactly. If if you ask me, I actually. <laughs> God, I know if this ever, if, if an actual like one of those Veraboos sees this, they'll be like, you want to be a French tank? But I think I would. I think I'd want to yeah. be serving the French because I think your survival rating is not great, but if you're a tank crew, it's probably better than the bigger forces that are throwing their their supplies. If it was just what tank would you use to time travel in? Uh, yeah, probably a like a yeah probably a sherman because they're pretty reliable you'd have the supplies yeah. and the parts you wouldn't want a german tank because that would break maybe a panzer if, four, if but... you're time traveling you can go for a lighter tank that's faster as well yeah that's true that because be you know then it'd be just useful to move around in and scare romans or something but yeah yeah um but otherwise, I don't know. World War Two. Uh, Go or or Challenger, just because they didn't get much use and they just wanted yeah, want to see what. <laughs> like, have, have you heard of right the Norwegian the tank? Because they had one. <laughs> it was a Landsverk uh, L twenty that they got from Sweden, and they got one. They, they got one. Mm. Sweden gave them one light Yay. tank and it actually was given like an affectionate name like oh God, I have to look this up now but yeah it's it's just great because you're just like yeah that's it's not well to be fair oh God, I'm now apologies I'm going to stop myself because I'm about to go on into bloody talking about the Norwegian and now campaign. for the Norwegian campaign yeah. Yeah, that's what I was... <laughs> okay. all I'm going to say about that is that like that was very much uh Good, they're not fighting in mainland Europe. Yeah. Let's go there. Evening. Oh, Spectre. 
Hello. Yeah. Oh, Hiya. Yeah. Anyway, uh, if anyone wants to come up with a period for us to play next and ramble on about history, that's... That was a, yeah, it was a Landsberg L120 or a yeah. 100, L120, and it was Norway's first ever tank. Oh. That actually looks kind of nice. Looks a little bit like a, like a, like a BT, like a, a Soviet yeah. tank. War okay. of 1812. They didn't have tanks. No. <laughs> um, ah, oh, the War of 1812 as a thingy. Yeah, uh, I could definitely find games on that. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, are you doing any more movement than I? Otherwise... Uh, no, I think that's me. God, yeah, we're reminded we're playing the game. Yeah, oh, actually, can't, no, I can't if I'm fired, can I? Uh, no, then you can't Actually, move. No. no, 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 I'm I'm done. I just want to move in closer so we can do the close combat. Close yeah. combat with tanks. I, I feel like this is definitely going to, you know, Go probably finish amazing. things off a bit. <laughs> okay, you're going to lose half of your, well, not half, like a fair number of yours. Or I'm going to lose a fair number of mine. Who knows? And uh... no, in... In true Wehrmacht fashion, if I lose my tags, I am fucked. Because <laughs> you will envelop what I've got left. Let's see. So, da, 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 da. I think that's a good way to, to categorize yeah. it. Because if I lose oh, three tanks, like, I'm, I'm fucked. That's what I like, So, my yeah. plan did work out. Um, oh, and because I have initiative and can start the first close combat. Obviously, I'm going to use the units in, um, what is it, a S2 slash A2 and S3 slash A3, because that's where the boards overlap. But mm -hmm. uh, to attack your lonely uh, tiger in yep. R3. So it's different to the... Um, to the actual shooting because yeah. basically your armor becomes less relevant, which is yep, because you're right next to me, to me. Yeah. yeah, and it's I'm gonna ram view. you. <laughs> um, so basically, we just count off the bottom right hand corner values, which are your close assault values. So, okay, in my case, you and you total them. So, in my case, I have two units. Uh, at the top with four and four and two at the bottom with four and four so that's 16 yeah, total yes. versus four <laughs> so I got my four to one uh, ratio yep. um, you still have a fair chance to be honest and that's true. then let me have a look at the close combat uh, assault close assault table so that's a question like answer would be a four to one there aren't any they're not disrupted are they no and i'm not flanking so uh but what terrain are you in it's clear as that panther tiger leopard well leopard was never made but they well they made it later uh and a puma as well, they put in Oh, yeah, that was not a good car, was it? Yeah, but like, I don't know, they just liked the cats and thought it would sound cool. Whereas the Americans were just like lame and were like, yeah, we'll just name them after famous generals. Yeah, well, the, the British actually started that, I think, when they got the, oh, really? yeah. the least tanks in uh, the desert campaign, they started naming them things like Grant and Lee. Oh, really? And so I that's, that. yeah, and that's oh. where that came. I know that um, British tanks were weird. Sorry, continue. Play play the yeah. game. I'll, I'll Sorry. Wait until... No, it's my fault. It's so, my fault. Uh, close assault table, four to one ratio, and I roll a d10. Eight. And an eight is probably not great for me. Um, So six potential attacker, lo uh, defender losses and two potential attacker losses so we both get okay. to roll but you know i did exceedingly badly two, two for me yeah yeah uh six for you 
Sorry. Oh, so, oh sorry. Well, I've rolled yeah. two. I'll roll four. Uh, so roll that was four a three more. and a five. I'll, and these are the other four. Uh, oh! Two. A one, a one, a three, and a five. So the total is one, one, three, three, five, five. That's not fair. <laughs> no, it's not. Krupp steel, evidently. Can handle uh, so, the yeah. Uh, apparently. <laughs> Wow. Um, so, four people at home, and I made six saves, and yep. I failed one. <laughs> and believe me, I was the one that wanted to be destroyed. <laughs> I don't want these guys winning. Uh, there you go. So, one of my units is disrupted, and you're fine. <laughs> yep. Wow. And does this go back and forth, or...? Uh, yeah, now it's your turn. Um, so oh, that, that, that unit can't, I, yeah, couldn't engage anyway. But um, yeah. your other unit at the top, the two, Can. Yeah. could potentially attack. Uh, yeah, I'd like to attack the one that has not attacked. Uh, how many of them do I make? Um, so I just yeah, me you're attacking with the units in R two to yep. the units in um, S two slash A. To, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's still quite interesting because you've got two units there, so that means you've got a total of eight attacking strength versus eight defending. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Uh, which puts it on the one to one table. I don't think there's anything else. No. Oh, so, yeah, just a one to one. Mm. A one to one. Okay, so I'll just roll one d ten and then. Yeah. Oh, an eight. Oh. Well, that. Ooh, they weren't designed ooh, that, for running. That is bad. Yeah. It's the opposite oh. of the last one. So I get yeah. two saves, and you get six. Yeah, uh, jeez. <laughs> wow. oh. Tiger was not made for ramming at all. Mm. Okay. Right. Uh, Machine six, guns six and cannons firing away, and we all just miss the crap out of each other. Right, so oh, I've got another two saves. Two oh, failures. Yeah. I got a one, two, four, and five, both. and two nines. Oh, no! Damn it. Uh, so, yeah, both of your units in that hex are disrupted because you got two fails. No, goddamn. That actually turned out not bad for me. I was like, no, oh, dear, this is going to go hey, horribly can... wrong now. <laughs> You've taken out two. Well, you've disrupted. Well, I've disrupted them, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for that turn. We've yeah, housekeeping. One turn. Yeah. yeah. One turn. Sorry. <laughs> that's that's uh, my fault. That's, yeah. It was both of our faults. So yeah, just the housekeeping phase, remove all of the moved and fired markers that usually you can kick, click on so uh, housekeeping, yep. there you go, and I've removed the fired. Housekeeping, there we go. I think that's, that's all moved. Yep. Okay, uh, and then it's the aid and focus phase, so you can bring back your aid and focus tokens or flip them or move them or do things like that with them. Yeah, I've got I've got my focus and aid, so I can... What, what can I do for them again? Sorry. Um, if they're on the first, uh, the first side on the map somewhere, yeah, they're, they're, they're you could flip them to the thing. second one. Oh, yeah. Well, basically, they're at full strength there. You can either choose to move them three hexes, leave them as they are, or you could potentially move your focus token to um, the initiative box and use that to like try and improve your chances of seizing the initiative next turn. Um, mm. Or yeah, uh, or you can move them off map with the intention of moving them somewhere beyond three hexes next turn. But you can also they also move along with the unit if you want them to. So it's not really yeah. I think I'll keep them with the yeah, unit. Yeah, I think that's probably the 
your best bet because like you can use the aid token if you should fail either of your disrupted rolls for that those two units um, to try again basically okay I'm gonna find mine <laughs> I think I'll... I'm going to put the focus marker down there and I'm going to put the aid marker on this unit. I've been making a lot more use of my aid and focus markers than Nye because I need to and Nye has not had that much need to so far. <laughs> And there you go, and then we advance the game turn one, so we're on turn six. Yep. Uh, and then back round to determine initiative, which is, mm -hmm. uh, let me just close that. Just both of us roll a... I got zero, or is that a ten? That's a ten. Uh, it's a zero. No, no, it's a zero. No, it's a it goes oh, from zero okay. to nine in this, so yeah. So that's a very good roll. Yes, I have the first. Oh no! Initiative. Wait, no, it isn't. It's roll it high. Be a ten. Yeah, no, no. Um, it is a zero, but it's a roll high thing. No, if you, you if, still have the initiative. Yeah. If you look yeah, at the the charts, yeah. uh, that goes from zero to nine. Uh, mm. but, um, okay. Well, yeah. I will gladly take the initiative, that's fine by me. Uh, where are we at? Draw action cards. So we each draw a card from the deck. Just Which is hidden from each other. Uh, oh, I forgot I had cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't really needed That's... them at the moment, so... Oh, and, oh, actually, no, actually, yeah, I don't... Yeah, I can't really use either of these, so... Uh, I guess I have one that I could use. Ooh, I have... Ooh. Ooh, oh, that's... that's wonderful. <laughs> I have the very card I need. Um, then, after the draw... Uh, phase... It is the rally phase, so you can okay. roll for any of your units that are currently um, disrupted, which in my case is a lot of them. How do we use cards again? We can just use them... It says on the side of it uh, what phase you can use it in. Well, I'd like to use <laughs> um, veteran to rally the, the target unit. And well, that target uh, unit will be the... There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that oh. Yet. <laughs> no, you you would not like to use that. Mm, I'm glad I used that then, because I have some other cards I was about to use. <laughs> oh, uh, no. So, yeah. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> we'll return those two to the <laughs> I've yeah, been holding it. on to that card for half the game and, like, not needed it yet, so... I'm glad to find it. All right, well, I'll have to do it the old fashioned way then. Um, I'll have to just roll. roll so, do you want me to roll two, two D10? And we're just sitting uh, on the top of the first one. Oh, yeah. One yeah, sure. The second yeah. One. It will take ah, me a bit more time to roll. Go for it. A two and a seven. So, that means so the one, one of on the them rallied. It's undisrupted, but the one on the yeah. bottom is still disrupted. Yeah. That's fine. You can use your aid marker that's on there by flipping it. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, I, I, I will do that. Yeah. Uh, flip. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then you can re-roll it. Oh, can I? Okay, I'll just re-roll yep. Eight. So I trim. No. You can try that again if you want. <laughs> like, just get it's rid of your aid marker. For doing it. No, no. That's Try why it's it. sort of like it comes onto the map on the first side, so you can use it once. But if it stays I... with a unit, you can flip it 
and that goes to two, and then you can use it twice. Uh, which five. Is useful. A five is a rally. Okay then. But I have to. I have to get rid of uh, the the aid card now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just chuck it off to the side somewhere. Okay. Um, okay. Now it's my yeah, it's turn to rally, which is going to take a while. Uh, so I'll start with the two units in 07. Basically the same as you. I'll roll two dice. The top one is for the top one and the bottom one is for the bottom one and we'll see uh, neither of those rally then the T34 in Q6 nope the T34 in C8 nope and finally uh, the one T34, the top one in a S3 slash A3. Uh, no, but I'm going to use my aid marker for that one. And still no. For the people who've just joined us, um, Nye's German morale save is five. So that means anything that's a five or lower is a save or a rally uh yep. mine is the soviets is free yeah so you can see how well that's going weird weird that you're demoralized if anything like my guys should be really demoralized at this point in time i, don't know. I mean you know because they're playing on the whole better trained idea but yeah. fair enough yeah makes sense and even though tactical the, the part affinity. of the activities to disrupt their training for this. I, I think I mentioned this last time we played this, but didn't the Soviets do like tank like fearness removal? Like so the thing like to stop them being scared of tanks. So they had them sit in trenches while the tanks they practiced Drove driving over tanks oh, yeah, over yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just yeah. like the idea it's like the, the men are too scared of tanks. What an unrealistic fear to have. <laughs> Come on guys, it's just heavily armored with a big gun. It's only a big metal machine driving at you. <laughs> it's only uh, a giant machine literally designed to kill. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So... <laughs> been great if they were like, it's not the tanks, it's the planes you should be worried about. <laughs> big metal, well, not the canvas tanks machines coming out of the board. sky to kill you. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's the Navy, then they all laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not the navy uh, right after that fire phase um, so once again fire phase is alternating with me yep. going first you got the I don't really have a lot that can <laughs> no yeah you're going to do some tank ramming if I get that far um <laughs> Yeah, the thing is, you can actually fire into an adjacent hex, so, you know, it might be advantageous for you to just shoot the crap out of them now. <laughs> that is true, yeah. I'm going to see how advantageous it would be for me. <laughs> what is it? A one shift... Uh, one shift right. It's not really that great. Um, but the plucky little unit in P7 is going to have another pop at your tanks you in uh, that P7. at P7. M5. Oh, that guy, yeah. yeah. Oh, God, you've lined up Basically, a firing squad. Well, I had done, but they're all disrupted, so <laughs> not really doing that is also much. True. Um, so we worked this out last time. It's just a straight uh, zero column roll. Yep. And the seven isn't great. Uh, that's going to be one potential hit. So you get to roll one save. Yep. Yay. I'll have a roll. Oh, no, I failed to nine. 
first time. Yay. There you go. The top unit is disrupted. Damn. Oh no, I did it wrong. Darn it. Oh well. Uh, and I'll mark my unit as having fired. There you go. Now it's your turn to pick a unit and fire at something. So the okay, top that uh, top unit can't fire anymore, but the bottom unit can. Yep, and that bottom unit's gonna fire at your third undisrupted one because <laughs> that seems to work well for. Why them. do you hate me? <laughs> I, don't hate you, I just want to win. Yeah. Oh, seven. Um, so uh, to run through that again, that was I think if I remember correctly on the fours table. Yep. It's firing alone now, so it doesn't get the two shift to the right so it stays on the force table it's probably within short range yeah one two three yeah so it gets col column shift to the right so it's in the six uh, and okay. you rolled a seven yep. is two potential hits oh okay so two saves for me mm -hmm. uh bonk what I'm now trying I to failed think. both of them. Ooh. So what I'm happens is first save, failed save is disrupted. Oh. Uh, and then the second one is flipped. And then the potential third one would be destroyed. There we go. So that unit is currently fired, is disrupted and flipped. Yep. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, so yeah, you can mark your unit as fired as well. Yep. Just a ball today. <laughs> but as we said, this means bugger all in the grand scheme of things, because Kursk is not the place that they're going to win, because they're mm. not going to win. So. That'd be an interesting stream. Us trying to in vain work out how the Axis could win. And they couldn't. <laughs> so That would be yeah. upsettingly pointless, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. It'd be like, oh, if they did this, nope. <laughs> no, we're also, no, I'm going to throw this one at you now. Well, I'm going to throw this one. You have a 999, nine, nine, dude. I have 999. Nine, nine. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And and can you draw multiple cards at the same time? Because it says any on it, if it says that. Uh, well, any is in any phase. You can't have two out at the same time. Uh, you can use two per turn. So you've used one, and now this one's your second card you've used in the turn. That's fine. And same for me. Turn the tables. Well, you've already used two cards this turn, though. Oh. Oh, hide it quickly before I read it. Um, it's turned the tables. Yeah. There you go. Why don't the, why didn't the Germans just make T thirty fours? They had Panzer fours, but they like they did fancy actually things. use T thirty fours. They they recommissioned mm, yeah, some yeah. of the the T thirty four factories, but it ignores the problem that it doesn't it, <laughs> if you don't have the resources to make the tank. It doesn't matter what design you use. If you don't have the fuel to run them, it doesn't yeah. matter how great they are. They can be the best tanks ever. If they can't move, then, you know, well, if you don't tanks. have the crews to pilot them. I mean, what, what, why are you bogging us down in all these beans and uh, beans and bullets? It sounds, it sounds <laughs> like you're that ever turned out company? important. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, Unfortunately for me, that that counted as my alter, alternating go, so it's back to you. I'm just yes. going to run away for five seconds. No uh, problem. I'll try not to, to, to talk everyone's ear off. While no, you're that's fine. So I'm in firing, yeah? Yep. Okay, so I could potentially have that guy shoot at them. Okay. I'll ask. Okay, yeah. Anyone got any questions? 
any any questions to ask? I don't even know how many people we have. Oh, we got oh, we got some people. Oh, okay, got four people. I'll answer any questions. Probably gonna have um R three fire into hopefully into A two or A three, but I have a feeling that's not in the cards. Um. I don't know. Yeah, I have a feeling that's going to be a little bit out of my league. To be honest, I'm probably gubbed because these are two healthy tanks he's got here. Mine are healthy as well, but he's probably got a better chance of kicking the crap out of me. Okay. How are you playing this? Is Lewis controlling it on his end? No, no, Um, it's online. So we're using a thing called Vassal. Now, I don't know much about Vassal, so I can't offer too great an advice. But um, we're both using it. That's that's what the snafu at the start was. Um, if you watch the VOD back, we we spend thirty minutes just working out what's gone wrong. But yeah, we both we both control it. So I can move my pieces and his pieces and all this kind of stuff. It's it's basically like a virtual like board. Um, I, I would say the one thing that is a little bit thingy for me is that it's not very automated. Um, I think the cards are automated in shuffling. But aside from that. I don't know. You'd have to ask Lewis. Lewis, we had a question about Vassal. Uh, uh, yes. Just what is it? I, I don't think I gave the best response. Oh, I gave um, the Vassal is basically a tabletop game simulator, but um, it gets used a lot for hex and counter war games. Um, basically, go. you both have to have it, and then you can connect to a room. You can create a room on a server and both connect to it, and then load up whatever module you're playing. Pretty much, you get you get a module per game. So we're using the Battle of Kurskwan, but um, most of my Hex Encounter War games also have a Vassal module because they tend to make mm -hmm. them as well. Because it's not always easy to find people to play in person, um, and like pretty much what you need is then the rule book itself. So. All of the modules I have on Vassal are all games I actually own. Because I feel mm -hmm. like that's fair. I mean, you could technically, like, if you can find Dude, the rule book um, digitally, yeah. you could just run the module. But, you know, these people have taken the time to both make the game, get it printed, sell it, and also make a digital module for it. For <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. They deserve but, but Vassal some. is free. Um, so uh, like yeah, Vassal itself is free, and the modules are free as well. Uh, you just uh, you can look it up in a big list, but they have modules for quite a lot of different games. A lot of them are Hex and Counter War games, but there's all kinds of stuff on there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've been I've been liking it. Yeah, um, yeah, it's yeah. it like pff, I think sometimes I feel like the user interfaces can feel a bit clunky yeah but kind of once you get used to it it's not too bad really it doesn't like at no point have i gone uh this is so awkward to play that is really cutting into the fun i'm having exactly yeah so uh Vassal. i don't plan on moving but i do plan on shooting into those uh those t-34s in front of me i just realized i said moving yeah uh that's not we're what i meant so i do plan on shooting shooting yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. i'd like so, to shoot into the ones right in front of me uh which which hex is firing which units are uh, firing? r3 uh, that not single panzer yeah yeah into which ones the disrupted T thirty four is that okay that into S three slash A three, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, so um, yeah this one's going to be painful for me. Um, oh yeah, yeah. You to roll it, the dice and just... it is well, yeah. You can roll the dice while I explain it to everyone. So you start off um, twelve armor piercing firepower versus four armor on the one. eight table uh, but you also get a column shift to the right because the because 
basically it's in very short range because you're adjacent to the units um, other than that I don't think there's any modifiers going on there so that will put you in the sixes table and you got a one that's probably one of the best results you can have is uh, five potential hits oh no <laughs> I'm danger <laughs> I'll say a one, a five, a six, an eight, and a nine. Oh no, oh. I, I have to roll them to save. Oh, sorry, yes, yeah, of course, I, I zoned out there. <laughs> wow, I wish you'd gone with mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> wow. Oh, they're all safe. Zero. Um, two, two. So yeah, basically saves are the same as your morale level so for rallying so yeah. in my case it's a free and i rolled a zero a two a two a three and a three oh, <laughs> no. um what that also means is your unit counts as having fired yep oh god okay <laughs> well i'm i'm in trouble now <laughs> um, <laughs> then it's my go again do i want to fire anything else Problem is, if I don't, you're gonna fire at me. Yeah, with those two up there. But, yeah. yeah. But, like, I also know it's not really gonna do anything if I do. So it would be easier for me. I suppose I've got two sh um, free shifts, right? So I start off in the free, uh, in the zero. And then I would get up to six as well. Go on then, I'll give it a go. Um it a go. So the unit in S two A two uh is going to fire at your units in R two they haven't fired mm -hmm. yet and if I can disrupt them I can hopefully stop them firing um, so I start off in the zero columns fire anti-tank firepower of eight versus an armor of eight um, mm -hmm. but I have a shift to the right because it's short range because I'm adjacent to them and mm -hmm. two shifts to the right because there's a second unit in the firing hex assisting mm -hmm. Uh, that ends up two, four, six. We're on the six column. And I rolled horrendously. A uh, nine. Two potential hits. Wow. I shall roll. I hope you fail both of them and disrupt both units. Not in a vindictive I way, more in a. Oh, well, you failed one of them. <laughs> you can only annihilate me with one unit. <laughs> yes. Not the roll I so, have yeah. The uh, so my units count as fired, and yes. one of yours is disrupted. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to fire. I'm going to fire with the one that's still remaining uh, into the... Well, the one that just fired back at me, I'll repost. <laughs> we'll do this like a yeah. like age of sale. That's a yeah. two. Um so yeah. That's uh on the four firepower chart. Twelve mm -hmm. firepower twelve versus um wait, firepower of No it isn't it's on the eight chart, sorry. Five power of twelve versus my armor of four, so it goes down to eight. And then do, do, do. shift to the right ten. I did that wrong a minute ago. I, think I did. Sorry. Sorry. Right. Don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, you're on the tens column, and you roll the two. So that's five potential hits again. 
Mm. I can't save them all this time. That would be impossible. Mm, never say never. Mm. Yeah, told you. A zero, two twos, a three, and okay. a five. The five is the bad one. One of them, yeah, one of them is disrupted. But other than that, <laughs> they came out of that all It is right. actually like Age of Sales. We're just like yeah, sitting just... aloft, each other, just shooting broadsides. Uh, okay, I think that's pretty much the fire phase. Uh, well, mm -hmm. your unit counts what was marked as fired. Yep. You couldn't really have rolled much better on that. I don't know if I have any more units that could potentially fire. Not really. No. And then it's movement. Um, so yeah, I have the initiative, so I can move all of my units, then you can move yours. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I think what I'm going to do here is the units down in R8. One, two, three, four. And move them. Uh, one, two, three to here. Uh, oh no, wait, I don't want to do that, do I? Bonk. Sorry. One, right. two, and then you'd be range that's my minus two. Nah. Don't think I can really get many good firing positions on you. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five, up to Does a wreck count as any kind of protected terrain? Yes. Okay, I will move them up to there then. But they're not really gonna uh, be able to fire or anything this turn. No, I think that's it for movement. I'd say, do you want to move anything? But uh, mm, yeah. you can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, then close assaults. Getting late, isn't it? I'll risk it. Um, yeah. But I mean, we can... Are we planning to come back to this next week, or are we wanting to do something different? I don't know. I think we'll, we'll see how it how it goes. That's um, true. Yeah. Depends on how much time you have left. That's true. In any event, I am going to attempt to use my one undisrupted, unfired unit in S three A three to uh, close combat attack your panzer unit in the single panzer unit in uh, R3. Yeah. So that's going to be on a one-to-one -one because my close attack's four, yours is also four. Um, yeah. 
won't be great, but hopefully mm. if I roll low enough, it will be bad for all of us. I don't know. It it turns out it isn't. It's mostly bad for me. Uh, rolled a six, so on the one-to-one -one chart, that's three potential hits for the defender and five potential hits for the attacker. Okay, well. So another five saves for me on one tank, which is great. Once again, I almost pulled it out of the bag, but in this case, disordered and flipped. I mean, definitely fighting it out. Also, we seem to be uh, like foregoing random facts at the moment. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know. I, 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 I feel like we're never going to get this game done if we continue uh, with the random facts. Sorry. I do want to talk about random facts. <laughs> well, talk about random facts whilst you roll a, a free dice. I'm really bad at multitasking. When it comes to that sort of stuff, I have to remember to do stuff. Uh, also with the, well, actually, I'm not bad at multitasking. I'm just, I think because I'm not super familiar with the game, I kind of wait to see what you're doing to kind of follow the leads kind of thing. Uh, um, Bubble so Red, it, you're always allowed to ask questions, don't worry. Yeah, that, don't worry about it. It's all, always. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is it's that's not... half this stream, either us rambling about random World War II facts or other... Facts. <laughs> yeah, just mildly linked tangents <laughs> or yeah. answering questions as they come up. Exactly, yeah. Have you been, um, played quite a few games of the style, tile-based war games? No. I, this is, yeah. This is... uh, yeah, well, um, Twilight Struggles by GMT, and I have quite a lot of GMT Hex and Counter War games. Um, but, yeah, I think, Nye, this is the second one you've played <laughs> with me. Yeah. The first one, we'll get that on the channel at some point as well, because that's fun. It was mm -hmm. World at War 85, which is like a Cold War gotten hot mm -hmm. kind Basically, of game. Yeah. Um, similar to this in that it's also tactical level. Uh, but other than that, I don't think you've really... Unless you've I've been played, moonlighting and things, playing like, them with your yeah. friends. just I've played a lot of like what you call tactical because this is like strategic whereas i've played tactical so like warhammer 40k and things like that um but these are different kind of games because like yeah like what we're moving around are individual tanks but it's on a more kind of grander scale well, i guess is the idea I'm, I'm i'm gonna be mean now and say it's still tactical because oh, it's it an tactical? actual engagement yeah so as long as you're uh, fighting in a battle space, it's a tactical engagement. And then sort of broader level above that, you have what would be called grand tactical or operational level. Oh, okay. That's like, that's maybe what we were going to play next with um, Across the Bug River. Oh, okay. If you're Isn't up it for you? it, that's... Yeah. It's, yeah, whatever. It's... Um, that's more I've of played, a operational a level, Farm, and then which is a grand strategy game. That's a video yeah. game. Ah, yeah. Well, yeah. That's then like real strategy level, which I'm not very good at. I know how to do things. I don't actually know how mm. to win. <laughs> um, but yeah, in general, I've played a fair few of these kinds of games. Actually, less tactical games and more operational, strategic because. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's just something I prefer. Yeah. The tactical ones are fun. And usually I, they're fast if if you don't have people like me randomly <laughs> going on about stuff. <laughs> I think it's either of us at this point. Uh, well, as well, yeah. Because we, we did talk about that where it's like, this is a slower movement-based game compared to things like 1985, the, that one. Cold War going hot yeah. because yeah. we've got a lot more because Yeah, pretty yeah. much everything 
is me- well everything mm. is mechanized yeah. there yeah. so it all moves quickly if everyone's in transports whereas yep. here okay in this case it's tanks but um the middle uh middle value in the little explosions is their movement rating so like the Mm -hmm. tigers have a potential move of up to four hexes per turn barring terrain difficulty that moves a lot slower Mm -hmm. yes that's uh... why it also has 14 turns in this scenario a maximum of but i don't think we'll get to that because looking at it it seems like yeah. we've approached the point where there's going to be a big fight out here uh, and whoever wins that will probably just break out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Because if I lose my tanks, I'm, I'm going to forfeit because there's yeah. nothing I can do at that point. I'll have I'll have two left and they'll just get encircled. Mm-hmm. Well, I think um, the scenario rules are you get two victory points for exiting the map on the other side and minus one for each of your tanks destroyed Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. also in this case it's representing platoons as well so it's like in the tanks three to five tanks probably Mm -hmm. yeah unless you're t-34s well then it's definitely five anyway um Ready to roll your three D tens and see yes, what I happens. Am. Sorry, I should have been doing that while we were talking. Oh, that's all right. Two, three, one and failed. eight. One so failed. one failed. So they're dis- it's disrupted. Uh, like... Which one? Is that? Sorry, the uh, <laughs> uh, the, the one in R three. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I removed. So it's been fired at, and it's been. Well, it has fired and it's disrupted now as well. Yeah. Or disordered, I think it's called on the... Disordered, so yeah, but for whatever reason, mm-hmm. it, it's not liking... There we go. I've got oh, one. there you go. Mm. I've got two yeah. fired, but hey. Doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> it definitely fired. Um, And I think that's probably it for this turn as well because everyone else is disrupted or fired or can't really do much so Mm -hmm. housekeeping phase uh, everyone stops moving and we remove all of the fired markers yep there we go. Okay, and then aid and focus again. Um, I'm gonna flip that one down the bottom, and I'll add in the aid marker here. I'm gonna need it. And then you can move uh, your aid markers. Yep, oh, I can move them back on. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, How did you uh, get on anyway, Bubble Reg, with Twilight Struggle? AKA, did you enjoy it? (laughs) (laughs) Also, you know, if you want to come on and play something like that, or, yeah, Twilight Struggle itself, or something like this, let me know. You're always welcome. Um, I, uh, yeah, it is useful that they made an online version of Twilight Struggle now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Helps a lot. Yeah. Especially when the two people live very far away. <gasps> That's us. Yeah. <sighs> we live I don't far really. away. It's secretly nice just in my cupboard. Yep. Or mm-hmm. I'm in Nye's living room. I don't know what <laughs> uh, i This is my entire house. You're looking at the entirety <laughs> of my space. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, I'm just so... sitting next to you. It just happened. Yeah. The oh, wall's hi. just a different colour. Yeah. Uh, right, after that, advance the turn marker again. See, we got through that turn quicker, didn't we? We did. I'm now stopped we're... doing the facts. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, though, you're going to have to really start like pushing your tanks forward. Well, I would, but you, you just are sitting there so shootable. <laughs> uh, right, we'll roll for initiative. Yep. Badoof. I have also been getting things with my initiative. Three. No, it's bigger number. Yep. Yep, so it's your go first. So it's still me. Yeah, this I don't is know this how I'm managing. Uh, yeah. yeah, I oh. got initiative first, first, first. So it's like... Um, World at War 85 is also like, it's a card drawn system, so per, well, they represent similar like companies and things like mm -hmm. that. So per company you have on the map, uh, you have a card representing them as an activation. Yeah. Uh, and it all gets shuffled into a deck with some miscellaneous things like weird stuff can happen on the battlefield and stuff. Uh, and then in NATO's case, you get an extra generally every one card that gives you a free activation for any unit you choose. Uh, oh, no, no, wait, that's... No. NATO has two cards per company so that they can activate twice, potentially. Um, but you also have free end-of-turn cards in there. And if two of them get pulled, then the turn ends. Uh no matter where, who who went or who didn't get go. Um, but Nye also, because he was attacking in that scenario, had an extra card where he could just, yeah, activate one of his companies. Yep. And Nye managed to get, I think, like three or four back-to-back -back oh, activations. Yeah, I it just... It was like most of the game, you just... just like, yep. Oh, and I went for Nye's moving again and shooting again. <laughs> And this is, this is the basically the flip side of it because yeah. I can't go anywhere and I have been stonewalled. Yeah. Yay! Played cautiously. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, draw action card again. Just chuck one in your deck. Yep, yep, yep. Hooray. Oh, was did I not put nine 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 back in? Nine nine nine. I don't think I did. I put it yeah, back in. The... Right. Oh no, I no, because it's it's in the it's in the discard pile. So I've just been uh, sorry. Right, if we pull nine 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 again. I'll put it back yeah. in. That's my fault. Um. Yeah. And then it's undisrupt units. I'll let you go first again because. You both stand more chance of undisrupting units, and it will take less time. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. So I need to roll for one, two, three, three units that are disrupted. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'd roll them per hex. So, right. Okay. The one unit down in is it one? So yeah, R two. One two unit in. One. Yeah, I'll do R two first. That's a nine, so it yeah. failed. R three is a two. Ah, oh, so that passes there. Rally. Um, the M5. one. Yeah. One in R two, you could potentially re-roll with your aid marker. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I might do that then. I'll re-roll R two. Just R2. move it off the map again. That's another two. So, yeah. So yeah. there you go. They rally. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then I bad. will start with the two units down in um, 07. Oh. One of them rallies. Uh, the unit in P7. Nope. The unit in Q6. Yes. The unit all the way down in C8. 
No. Uh, then the two units in S3A2, uh, S3A3. That's two. No, I'm going to use my marker for one of them. No. And then the unit in S2A2. No. Well, there you go. I may have the initiative, but I can't do anything. Yes. Uh, fire my phase. <laughs> I can. Ooh, I'm going to. Yeah. I will actually go first in the fire phase with the unit in R5. I moved into that wreck marker, firing at your panzer, um, your panzer, your tiger in R3. Okay. So that starts off as a zero. Um, but it gets a two shift to the right because of an additional fire, fire that goes to the four column. And I rolled a one, which is four potential hits. Ooh, okay, damn. Right, Finally, okay. someone's do doing something. Oh, it's easy. Come on. There. Oh, one, two, four, five. Yes. Yeah. I might. I. I. The, the castle. Just, the castle yeah. wall shall not be broken. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure if I have enough units to just pin you here for <laughs> 14 turns. <laughs> like at some point, you're just gonna blast them away. <laughs> That is true. I think it's just, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's your go to fire. Okay. Well, we're going to fire with... Um, sorry, I'm just going to double check something. Okay. So, we are going to have uh, the one in R2 to fire on the one adjacent to it in S1 slash S... Oh, sorry, S2 slash A2. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do that. That's a five. Okay. Um, so that starts off in the eight column again. It gets two shifts right because there's an additional fire plus another one because there's uh, because you're adjacent, so you're at short range. So that goes into the sixteen column, and a five is six potential hits. What do you reckon? Can I save them all this time? I don't know. I'm hoping I, you do. I do know. I don't think. It, wow. wow! One, two, That's three, four. That's a lot four, of saves. We've no, been very lucky. Uh, yeah. So the, the top unit gets disrupted, and then I'll flip the bottom unit. I would like to play Ooh. aggressive leadership, and I would like to have oh. that same unit fire again fire on again. the same target. Well, I, I can fire first, but I'm not yeah, sure no, I, I don't. actually I'm have any. That. Yeah, no, that's. <laughs> oh, they're going to wipe that unit out. Um, problem is, a lot of my units also really don't have any firepower left. Like the ones that can fire are in that tree line, but they're also reduced, so. Yep. What am I firing on minus four? <sighs> ah, go for it. So the unit in O seven is gonna fire at our friends in M five. Uh I'm on the minus four column. <laughs> and that's believe, about it. believe in the yeah, heart. If I if I roll a zero or a one it'll it'll at least do something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it did nothing. That, yeah. Um... yeah. Now you can, um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Let's fire again. That's a seven. 
Uh, so that's still on the 16 column. A 7 is five, 4 potential hits, which probably be enough. Two, no! Two, Wait. two uh, only one. I have to roll them die. Oh, yeah, good, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm that's glad four you fails. Them. Yeah. Four fails. So, uh, flip is one. Uh, destroy, destroy, destroy. Fire, no, just Remind me again, those minefields and there, are they actually like there, there, or are they just... The ones behind you, no, they seem to be stuck on the map somehow. Okay, um, well, I'm fine. But what I do need to do is add a rec marker here. Yep, because I'm going to have to drive through that. Well, I'm not going to yeah. drive through it. I'm going to have well, to. Well, <laughs> like, uh, who cares? <laughs> Just dead people in the way. Can um, I drive through Rex? I thought Rex were like blockages. No, no, you can drive through them. It's uh, more of it. It Rex are useful because they basically provide a form of um, cover. Ah, okay. I did and I think yeah, they do. Cost a bit more movement, but not more. When, when you want uh, to finish up, because I, I know it's late for you. You're an hour ahead. Well, I think we'll finish this turn, and I'm pretty sure that'll be the end of it. Okay, no bother. If you can wipe, yeah, I can't fire anymore. Uh, I can. With mm -hmm. wait, let me just close that. Um. Unit here, there. But that's the same thing again. Like I need a one or a two, so that didn't do anything. So you can f fire with the tiger at the top there, and if they wipe out that unit, then I think we can call that a game because I'm going to okay. be hard pressed to stop those three tigers from just waltzing over that bit of the map. Mm -hmm. And I pretty much will just flank you at that point. Too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That is the problem. I did say I was going to win everyone at home, so don't don't feel mm -hmm. too surprised. <laughs> yeah, you bet against yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you, it's your turn to fire, or are you? Not uh, it's your to? turn. No, no, I've All already. Right. So, well, I'm gonna uh, have you one in R three fire into the one that is disrupted yeah. and all that kind of jazz. So yeah, okay. So that's uh, you start on the eight column and a shift to the right to the ten column. I got a one. Ooh, that is eight potential hits. I think I think this will end it. <laughs> so yeah, start voting now what you want Nye to play me at next time. Oh, Although God. I think next week we'll go back to uh, the revolutionary state of Yeah, because that is where we can chat. Yeah. It's not too bad because we can get back into things a lot yeah. easily. Whereas this, we have to kind of... Re oh, wow! I actually made four saves, but it's still not enough. Um, yeah, you need a lot of so they're all disrupted. Mm, that one gets flipped. That's one and deleted. That's two, and this one is also destroyed. So yeah, that's a big old hole. Uh, big old hole in your front line, because now yeah. I could. Like, if we're just going to, because I think, are we saying this is, yeah, like... basically like what you can do is, you know, you can just run for there now with those Pretty three much, units, yeah, and... Uh, that still technically wouldn't get you the largest possible victory, because you'd need yeah. eight victory points for that, but, you know, you'd still have a reasonably... But even then, what I could victory. do... 
well, my plan was to move down there, smash through this defense here, using the 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 two here, and then I can yeah. regroup with the one here, taking out these three in the woods, and then the whole force can just thunder through. And yeah, the defensive line there is not going to hold. Uh, I think yeah. So four to seven victory points is a tactical German victory anyway. And like eight or more would be operational. <laughs> but yeah. I think it's fair to say you won that one. It's like most of my units are disrupted. There's very little chance of them undisrupting. The mm -hmm. only units that really pose a threat are the ones uh, in R5 and F6. Uh, but they're really going to be hard pressed if you just go. Yeah, and punch through, it yeah. and yeah, keep going. Which was my original plan, because um, I, I just the pincer maneuver is always like because a lot of people think yeah. the pincer maneuver is like looping rem, but it was the forks one as well because you had to try and well, fuck through your plan because you were hoping I would just go straight down the middle all my tanks and then you would just. <laughs> and then, into them. I just like ah. Yep. Still, I Vanilla. got in there with the close combat. You did that. That and, I was very worried yeah. about. I could have fucked me yeah. so badly. But it does seem to be like because I was trying to work out how to take out the tigers purely shooting wise. Like, okay, I've got a lot of units, but it's very difficult to yeah. even dent them with the T thirty fours. But yeah, if you. If you throw them in at close combat, yeah, no, there's not much can the tigers get, can do. Yeah. I can get enough numbers in there because we're basically even at that point, and then it's just yep. down to numbers. Mm. I got very lucky Good with my armor. Yep, very lucky. Consistent. So did well. I? Oh, yeah, that is true. I, think, <laughs> I must have made ten or more, f like three or less saves. Oh, totally, <laughs> so yeah. 100% no, I was insane. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's about it. Anyway, um, Bubble Ridge or anyone out there, if you have any ideas of any other particular conflicts you'd like to see us battle it out in, let me know. Other than that, if you want us <laughs> to talk about history some more sometime, uh, let us know about that as well or if you want to join in let yeah, me know um, and other than that I think we'll be back next week mm -hmm. Sunday with um, Worlds Without Nibers again <laughs> uh, oh, ooh, yeah. I have the module for that and the rule book ooh. somewhere I'll have to dig it out of the attic though. <laughs> uh, so yeah, next week we'll be continuing the development of the revolutionary state, which is now known as Aris and was formerly known as Mert. Yep. Because they the finally got Parliament rid of uh, yeah. Finally got rid of David Montague, who exactly. lives across the road now. And yeah. keeps telling people he's in charge. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. I don't think I'm really up to a lot of things this week otherwise, digitally, that you can see me in. So, yeah, Nye, what are you? What are you doing? I did say I would share what I was working on. Uh, so, yeah, oh, yeah. I have a, the people I have, have been waiting. I have a podcast now. I have two episodes on the podcast. Yeah. Um, what is it? So about? It, it's it's a history podcast, but um, at the moment it's more just little uh, bits and pieces of history. Uh, so the first episode was on Alexander the Third of Scotland, and then this one today is on the Bradford sweets poisonings of eighteen fifty eight. Um, they are very rough. I get. I think is the best way to describe them. Someone was listening to them today and they were giving feedback and I was like, yes, I need to include this and that and the next. But that's a good thing. 
Oh, it's called. Um, I actually probably could just put the link in the well, in the Twitch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Put it up there, and I'll put the link on the YouTube. Um, YouTube yeah. I really should advertise it more, but there's a part of me that kind of just lazy. Well, as I well. kind of, I kind of get that, like the world's without numbers thing and stuff, and even this, I haven't really advertised as much as I probably should, but and only really where people already know us but i kind of just want to build up enough of them there we go, go. look that this is definitely be, worth watching that should take to yep. the right place. it's called erzatz expert but um mm -hmm. yeah and also it has um a compilation of all the videos i've been in so there's a lot of garblag stuff there there's yeah, the so much game stuff and there's even a bit mm -hmm. of the D, D stuff i do with other people so yeah if you want to just watch Oh, Dumped that's interesting. In. Yeah. Yeah. You should oh, be able to cool. see that it's called Videos I'm in. It's a big yeah. compilation. But yeah, that that that's, I mean, you already love, everyone mm. here already loves Garblag, so it's not really hard. To yeah. Find that, but <laughs> everyone honestly, here yeah. is, I think at the moment, let me look in, in the viewers. Yeah, everyone here is pretty much part of Garblag. <laughs> All Garblag adjacent. That, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, but uh, um, no. Other than that, I threw out a thing recently uh, on Garblag and on Safino's uh, channel, and it's also on my own So Much Game Discord. If you want to join that, there's a link for that on the YouTube as well. Um, but I can also just put a link in chat now. That's probably a good idea. Uh, about battling a giant sci-fi space whale yeah, with so. a bunch of sailors <laughs> in a big space Moby Dick kind of scenario. So mm, Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me just find an invite. That's an invite to the Discord channel for people watching on Twitch, and there'll be one down below for people watching on YouTube. Um, other than that, yeah, I don't think I am up to very much this week for most of the week, but I'll be back with Nye on Sunday for yep. more Worlds Without Nibers. Are you on any Garblag things this week? Uh, I am on... Well, uh, this coming week I will be on on Friday for the Traveller game. So that'll be fun. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Ren space. Yeah. I'm quite excited. Mm. Uh, but I think that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the only thing for Garblag. And I don't have anything not Garblag affiliated next week either. Yeah. So. Other than that, we'll have to look for a date for part two slash the finale of Mouse Ritter. Yes, we will. Yeah. Uh, okay thank you Nye for popping by and thoroughly trouncing me <laughs> thank you for having <laughs> As expected. me it's always lovely yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. it's always great having you on uh, um, we'll have a look at what else we can play in the future in a similar vein um, and yeah that's pretty much it I think so Without further ado, I will say stay safe and stay gaming. Good night. Bye-bye.